Hello there guys and welcome to the Worcester Wolves podcast. This is the first episode. I am here with my guest, shooting guard or sla- uh, slash small forward for the Worcester Wolves and also GB International, Kofi Joseph. Kofi, how are you doing? I'm alright, thank you. I'm alright. So, um, you're here in Worcester. How has it been settling in with the locker rooms and the culture of the city? Well, it's been great, you know. Obviously, I'm from Birmingham, so it's not too far. But this is probably one of, probably being one of the best places I've lived in because it's small, but everything's close. You've got everything that I'm used to, food, cinema, yeah. shopping, and all that stuff. So I'm pretty comfortable, pretty comfortable. Yeah. Uh, have you like, settled in with all the boys in the locker room and you know the coach, yeah, everything all gelling together nice and well for the team? Yeah, definitely. We've got a great group of guys, man. Like... Team-wise, probably one of the best teams I've been on overall because everyone gets along, everyone talks, yeah. um, everyone cracks jokes and stuff. And coach, he's in there with the guys too. Do you know what I mean? He's not quite like separate. He's he's, he, feels, he feels like he's one of the boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a nice it's a nice feel. It's a nice situation. I say, uh, looking at the Instagram and the social medias, it looks like you've got quite a big you know group of personalities. You know, yeah. I know uh, uh, Raheem is all like a you know very big personality. He sort of, sort of looks like a joker of the group. So. Yeah. Um, so, how how is the Wolf Pack, or you know, the fans of the Worcester Wolves? How have they been um, a key into like your welcoming into the team? They've been amazing. Like I talk to all the fans after every single game, and especially like after losses and stuff, they've like picked my mood up. Yeah. So like I'm so thankful for them being there. But they're super friendly. They're really helpful, and they're like an extra 10, 15 points each game exactly. because of how loud they are. Especially remember fighting to come back yeah so yeah like i can't speak hardly enough i was gonna say uh, being out there on the sidelines i i feel like goosebumps on my arms every time i'm filming the filming so i can't imagine what it's like for you guys so it's, it's absolutely amazing uh, obviously you're a well-rounded you know you're a well-established basketball player in your own right um when did you decide that basketball was going to be your sport when did you first like sort of pick up a basketball and think this is me this is what i want to do uh i'd say i was about 11, 11, 12, I was in year six at school. And uh, before that, I swam for like my region for West Midlands. I did a bit, little bit of like Kung Fu, tennis, all that stuff. But when I found basketball, kind of just stick. Yeah. It's a funny story because my mentor at school, he liked basketball, I didn't yeah. like basketball. And he kind of gave me a ball when I was outside and I was about to kick it over the fence. <laughs> and then he was like, throw it off the backboard. So I threw it off the backboard and the first shot went in. Oh. And then since then I was like, oh, Okay, so I kept aiming for the same spot and it kept going in. And then he was trying to calm me down with like stuff that was going on in class and stuff. And then every day after that, we'd just go out in the playground and shoot. Mm. And that's probably why I love to shoot so much. Yeah. So it's just one of them very puny type things. Mm. And obviously it's just kept going. So, so watching you dial it in from range on a night, it's, it's when it keeps dropping, 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 it's raining threes. Nice. It's, it's crazy. Uh, so is it something that like, so from that, is it something that you've always seen yourself doing, like pushing on to be the professional that you are playing all over the world is it always something that you've seen yourself doing yeah definitely when I when I started playing I thought hmm I quite like this and then I looked at the next steps of what I could potentially do with it because I was like I like having fun with it and um, my mentor was like if you apply yourself properly why not be a professional because obviously yeah. he was into the BBL and stuff like yeah. that but he was like you should go to America you could do this you could do that and then from there, I was like, okay, these are the steps that I need to do to get in order to where I want to be. And that yeah. was it. Yeah, that was good. Uh, so, obviously, a lot of players have icon- icons or idols that they have. Is there a favorite, like, uh, like a basketball player, like an NBA player or an NBA team that you sort of follow from that point onwards that sort of helped you or mold your play style? Uh, it was Alan Iverson for me, because obviously AI, at the time. AI. I was short, I was probably like 5'4". I had yeah. cane rolls and I kind of <laughs> had like the bad attitude, like yeah. bad attitude while I was at school. So like that kind of, the way he played as well, really aggressive, yeah. that kind of just fit me to the T. So I was like, that's me, yeah. that's who I want to be like. And I was like 5'4", he was mm-hmm. six foot as yeah. a grown man. So I'm thinking I'm probably, I just want to be six foot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was it. So sort of like sort of seeing yourself mirror to mirror with with, with AI, you know, obviously shooting three and you just got to step over an opponent now. Yeah, I know, I know. I thought about doing it a couple of times and keep fouling me, but no, I won't do that. <laughs> you won't give them that disrespect. No. Nah. Uh, so, how hard like is it like schedule-wise and training? I know dietary 
um, how hard is it to like get in shape and keep like a continuous grind to get to where you're at? Uh, I'm quite used to it now. To be honest, in college it was probably the hardest because like you've got a full class schedule mm. also and you're practicing two, three times a day. Oh, yeah. You got homework, you got class, and you're trying to manage your own downtime and stuff. That was probably the worst. But as a professional, I'm in my fourth year now, so I know when I need to stretch, I need to foam roll, I need to get a nap, I need to go to bed at the right time, I know how much I need to eat. Mm. Like I'm quite experienced with that stuff now, so. Do you have your, do you do all your dietary plans yourself? Mm -hmm. or do, I, I, know, yeah. I know some guys have like people like packing their lunches or like work out the calorie intake and stuff like that. But I mean, if you do it yourself, it's I'm into that stuff though. Like yeah, I like it. to cook, dude. Master chef, that's my chef. Uh, so like, I, cook, I, yeah, I cook a lot. Uh, I ration out my meals, um, and I'm big into like portions and stuff. Yeah. So I know what I'm doing. Obviously, that's a part of my sport, my profession. So mm. I like to. No one to a deeper level what's going on. Have you got like a favourite go-to dish one? Uh, I, like, I like sweet, sweet, sweet chilli chicken, mm. uh, thigh piece, some uh, sweet potatoes, uh, maybe some pasta, maybe some Mexican rice. I'm hungry right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was going to say, it's, it's hitting 12 o'clock, so yeah. we are we are getting hungry. Well, I, 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 I am anyways, I'll skip breakfast. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, especially after practice. Um, so obviously, Going from there, you uh, became the professional you are now, and uh, you got a call from the, uh, the the GB team to go up to the Commonwealth Games. Uh, give us a little insight as to how how that was getting the call up. Uh, I actually got my G my first GB call up when at the end of my Germany season, and then a year later, I got my first England call up okay. for Commonwealth team. Uh, the England team that was actually crazy because I got kicked off the. England team and I think I was like 15 really? yeah so this was like my first ever call up everyone else on the team I think they had already had jerseys and stuff before but this oh. was like my first ever one yeah so yeah that was uh, probably probably the biggest achievement for me personally just because of everything I've been through obviously I kept working kept working even through the ups and downs the hip surgeries all of that stuff and I still made it, do you know yeah. what I mean? To represent my country. Exactly, uh, you got like a huge amount of pressure on your shoulders to like carry the entire country through this, through <laughs> this tournament. So, uh, how, do, do, do you feel like an added pressure there? You got you got that there? Uh, no, not really. I feel like pressure-wise, I put the most pressure on myself, more than anybody else could, because um, I'm a perfectionist, so. Yeah. But obviously you want to do your country proud. Obviously, yeah. Um, yeah, so the pressure, it's more so I just want to I want to perform my best because I know how much work I'm putting. Yeah. So just showcasing that on one of the biggest levels. Absolutely. Uh, that's probably where the pressure comes from. Uh, was there was there like a stage in that where you thought, yeah, this is this is where I want to get to every time. This is where I where, where I want to strive to be. I want to keep playing for my country and keep striving to, to make this country better as a team. Yeah, it was uh, the Cameroon game. I think mm -hmm. I had like twenty something. Yeah. And like five or six threes. Fire and all. And I was something. just. Like I was in a flow state, like I weren't even thinking. They were everything was just going in. I was playing well, and um, obviously I made a GB team before, but I never really got to play. And I just felt like since that period to then, I'd improved so much, yeah. and I was finally getting another chance to showcase it. So, so on BBC, I knew family and friends back home were watching. I travelled halfway across the world to perform, and I was performing. So, yeah, like I say, I'm ruined it. Um, so obviously from then, uh, like you said you were in the fourth year of being a professional. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been tra well, very well travelled. You went to Germany, Switzerland, Iceland, and Sweden as well. Yeah. Uh, so how was it you know, fitting into each different locker rooms? Maybe also with like the language barriers as well. Did you have someone helping you out with that? Yeah, um, I was in Spain for a short stint mm -hmm. as well. Uh, that was probably the hardest place. Yeah. Um, language wise because my coach didn't speak English my teammates didn't speak English oh. it was just me and the American and one teammate spoke broken English so <laughs> it was literally just looking at him drawing on the board trying to figure out what he wanted us to do yeah. so that was an experience but everywhere else was pretty was pretty okay it's the, the tough thing is like joining a team late when um, guys are already established uh, you gotta try fit in uh, you're in a new country but I've been around a great group of guys every single time, I'd say, that made me feel welcome. So, yeah, I just try to do that for new guys. As, as, a, as, a, 
has it been tough like in each of those leagues? Has it like is there one that sticks out as being the toughest to play in, like opponent wise, team wise, or even like conditions? Like uh, I know obviously you got places that get get quite cold, like for conditioning. And uh, I'd say I wasn't in Switzerland that long, but the competition was really tough out there. Yeah. Uh, I would say Iceland was probably the toughest for me because. I hadn't played anywhere in a couple of months and then I landed and then I had to like practice as soon as I got off the plane yeah. without my bags. Yeah. They got lost somewhere and then the next day I had my first game and I had to play like 35 minutes. So, and in Iceland it's running, gone like yeah, threes crazy. and everything. So it's like a hundred points each. Oh. So like just being in shape and having such young players and not knowing your teammates names, the plays, any of that mm. stuff was probably the toughest just being thrown in the deep end and having to like yeah. swim and figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. So you're like, you know, everything every time you run in the offense you're like, uh I so <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> like, you don't know any of the plays. So shoot the three. Yeah, I got ISO, shoot three. But that's the thing when you're a professional like you're professional, you gotta figure it out. Yeah, you have you know to what I mean? So on, on the fly constantly, you just gotta keep working. Yeah. I guess that's obviously what makes yeah, what, what's made your career so far, you know, so successful, you know. <laughs> you know obviously getting picked for the G B team. Uh, so obviously you going around the world is sort of um it's it's brought you back here. Mm -hmm. Um but this obviously isn't your first stint in the BBL. Mm -hmm. Um so how was it also playing in, in Scotland for the Glasgow Rocks? Oh, uh, it was interesting. <laughs> it interesting. Was, it was interesting. Obviously Tony Garbaletto was the head coach there. Yeah. Um, he'd been trying to bring me in in the summer when I was at GB. Uh, it didn't work out at the time. Uh, I came when I did. It was an interesting year. It was good playing on the vets, uh, Kiona Chara and Gareth Murray, yes. because obviously they're super experienced even at the international level. So learning from them day in and day out was really good. And obviously I learned a little bit from them in the GB summer. Mm -hmm. So that I think that really helped me take my game a little bit to the next level. It was a tough year for me though, man. I didn't really like it, yeah. living in Glasgow oh. and stuff, but obviously it was a great programme, a winning programme. So um, I just had to go in and do my role, which was different to what I've been used to in other places. So, And there was a lot of changes going on, coaching-wise, player-wise. So really it was just a, a figuring it out type yeah. year for me. Cause the ins and outs, you've got many players leaving. Obviously the weather conditions aren't the greatest in Scotland, but <laughs> you just, sometimes you've got to just put up and deal with it. Yeah. Um, but obviously um, you're playing against, you might play against or some of your old teammates or some of the old opponents that you used to come up against. How, how weird is it or like sort of funny is it to come against those players that you used to come against going away and coming back? Maybe a, a completely different player. Uh. I can't wait. I just want to kill them all today. <laughs> in, 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 as friends, but I feel like once I step on the court, we're not really friends like that, obviously, after. But um, yeah, it's nice to see who's improved, who hasn't, yeah. uh, the word that's been put in. Obviously, you want all your friends and stuff to keep getting better. Yeah. And you also want yourself to improve, and it's always fun. Do you know yeah, what I mean? See so, how you like, sort of keep up with, with yeah, those players. And I know I've been putting in the work and improving, so it's nice to just roll yeah. out the ball and see what happens yeah but then as soon as you get on that court you're like oh, I'm the killer now I'm mm -hmm. going I'm coming for your ankles <laughs> yeah pretty much uh, so um, obviously the, the, I've, got, I've got a new segment so uh, I'm going to give you a, se a series of questions as to what your teammates uh, about about your teammates and to see who is like you know just generic questions about them so mm -hmm. uh, which teammate or you know or person in the locker room has been the um most helpful in your transition? Helpful in my transition? Uh, I feel like I'm the guy that's helping everyone with their transition. Really? You like the, like, I'm one of the older ones on the team yeah. and I'm English so like the Americans don't know like what Asda is or Audi because they're oh. used to Walmart so like telling them and stuff like that. <laughs> take, uh, take, take them on an Audi trip. Yeah. Get, get, get the bargain sausage rolls. It's tough. I'd probably say myself for that one yeah. just because like I'm Birmingham's half an hour away, yeah. where I'm from, so like I pretty not much know. Have, have, you, have you taken any of the guys around to around to Birmingham? Uh, so, like, so nah, I'm not yet. near that area as well. So I've I given like it. tips and pointers for like any that I've went. Yeah, but yeah, I haven't been with anybody yet. Have, have you given them like any like landmarks to visit or yeah, you know, or things to stay away from? <laughs> I'm an inner city kid, ain't it? So I can kind of tell them where they'll be safe, where they won't yeah. be safe, stuff to do as a foreigner, but. Yeah, they just want to see tourist stuff, really. Yeah. 
So uh, who who is the who's the who's the loudest in the in the dressing room? Like maybe on game days or, or just after practice? Julius. <laughs> Julius is loud, man. He don't stop talking. He's, funny. He's, He's constant, hilarious. constant, constant. Juice, man. Uh, is, there, is there any anything that you at any point where you just like, oh, please be quiet? <laughs> In practice, like if you're having a bad practice, yeah. he will let you know. Oh, he's he's one to trash talk. Oh, oh. yeah, he's, he's played in New York for many years. So yeah, that's that's oh. his thing. It's good though. It's it, good. We need it. Yeah, you need like a fire sort of thing. It's like, oh, like yeah. you can like, sort of nip back it in. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, who, who who would you say has the best music taste? Like, who is there any like a, a DJ in the in the locker room before games? Music taste. Might be Jordan, you know. Yeah. I don't want to say that. But <laughs> it might be Jordan. It might be. Yeah, I give it to Jordan. Yeah. Jordan or. Uh, might be listening to some country music sometimes. Oh. So <laughs> country? Marty likes his Dutch stuff, so. Oh, okay. I don't really understand what they're saying, so it might, might have to be Jordan. Yeah. yeah. Um, who, who would you say is like the practical joker of the group? Like you know, Martin? Yeah. He's annoying, man. <laughs> he's so annoying. Oh, oh there's been some wild pranks being been pulled. In. Yeah, he loves the prank. He's, yeah. he's one of the funniest guys. Yeah, he's one of the funniest guys. Mine. You'll find out. You'll find out more. Oh, is there is there some sort of like pranking coming for for, for mine? I, I I might do it. I might have to because he pranks everyone. Yeah. So. Have to Has someone been on the on the on the receiving end of like a serious prank or like someone that's kind of like set them off for the rest of the day? Uh, not yet. <laughs> but obviously we're still early in the season, yeah. so time will tell. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, who would you say has the best dress sense? Oh, I'm giving that to myself. Yeah, I was just saying you can't give it to yourself. <laughs> yeah, me definitely. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You're coming in like Jordan tracks. Obviously, you got your Jordan tracks on. You know, you this is a mad this style. Is, this is comfy swag. This, yeah, today. comfy, comfy swag. Finish practice. Exactly. Go home yeah. and then put your put your bougie shirt on. It's cold <laughs> out here, though. Yeah, you know, yeah. it is. It's chilly. It so. uh, who would you say has the worst dress sense in the locker room? And now you you might come under fire here. Do Raheem really? Just because some of the stuff he wears to practice, <laughs> like. He sucks and his like shoes be crazy colours. I was gonna say he, he seems like a guy that would wear random stuff to like put people off and make people laugh. Anything like if he just likes something, yeah. Then he just wears it. So he <laughs> just might like fluorescent socks today, light blue shoes today and like a black t shirt or something. He's <laughs> like, I'm feeling it, no, so I'll wear it, so I'm wearing it. None of the colours match, but you know what? If you wanna look yeah. As long as you're comfy, I'll I'll exactly. rock with it. Exactly. Do you think? Do you think? Uh, so, yeah, so uh, hopefully none of your teammates want to kill you after that, um, but we'll see. <laughs> you might be asked a few questions when you Probably. get back into the locker room next That's time. Fine. So um, we've, got the, we've got the next home game, mm -hmm. uh, it's the quarter final uh, of the BBL Cup. Guys watching at home, you can get to the University Arena, uh, 7.30 uh, um, uh, tip off uh, for the 29th of November. Uh, get your tickets now at WorcesterWolves. Uh, dot, uh, dot org. So yeah, so you have the uh, the Newcastle Little Eagles. Um, are you and the rest of the team feel like you're in a good place to keep working and obviously progress to the semi-finals? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we got Amir coming this week. Yes. Which is going to be great, just because we're down on numbers, um, and is a key a key factor to what we need in terms of size which will really help us. So he's coming at a perfect time, to be honest. Rather him come a week early than after a semi-final game, a uh, quarter-final game, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, we're, we're, we're ticking over nicely. We're practicing well. Uh, we're learning more about each other day in and day out. So that's all you can really, that's all plus we played against Newcastle in pre-season. We were only yeah. like six players. Obviously they've improved and made changes, but we've improved and made changes. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm confident in my guys. I'm confident in myself and coach. So, yeah. I reckon with the, with the new addition, you you're gonna have a huge like size advantage because obviously you're playing sort of a it's it's you, you're playing quite small ball at the minute. You've mm. got you haven't got that specific big guy to come in and, and work the post. Uh, do you think that addition will probably give you a, a heavier advantage? Obviously, yeah. With, with it on the inside, that will help. Obviously. Newcastle just signed CJ Gettys who's seven mm, foot as well. Yeah, yeah. They got Darius in there, so um, I think we'll match up a little bit better than we would have. Yeah. 
if we didn't have Amir and obviously they're going to still have CJ but they're a big team but they're pretty guard dominated just like we are so it's going to be a pretty even matchup yeah. to be honest I'll say adding Amir obviously is going to spread the floor a bit more hopefully get you open a bit more for, for some threes and, and let it rain let it rain over Worcester um, so how how influential will the Wolfpack be in the uh, in in the in the like the role, so they they might play the sixth man mm-hmm. almost, you might call it. So how how important will their support be to bring the noise and help help you guys uh, pull out the win? They're definitely the sixth man. Every single game, even the games we've lost, if we weren't for them, we probably would have lost by more. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So and the games we've won, it's definitely been because of them. Yeah. Like they've helped tremendously. Uh, they're going to be huge. Um, we just need everybody to be out there showing out, shouting. Uh, letting the other team have it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Like we just need them. We need them. We need to perform, and we need them to perform, so we can just win together. Well, that, yeah, I was to say they, they 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 come alive. The uh, the game against Bristol, they mm-hmm. were on their feet in that fourth quarter. They, you know, yeah, and then you guys just perform for them. So uh, obviously, they obviously know that they are uh, their hard work uh, ensures that your hard work pays off. Yeah. Uh, so most importantly. Do we expect a quarter-final victory for the Worcester Wolves? Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. I don't really play to lose, so if I thought I was going to lose, I wouldn't play. Yeah. It'd be pointless, do you know what exactly, I mean? Exactly, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think we're just going to prepare the right way and then go and give, us, give, give our best. Mm-hmm. I think we can beat everyone in the league, to be honest, just whether we perform. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Other teams are going to play well, but we can also play well, so we just do what we're supposed to do and perform. I don't see why we can't win and beat everyone. Exactly. I was say I see a fight from from the players this season. I see, I see a lot of a lot of very good in, not not just individual talents, but like the group as a whole. Yeah. Um, obviously, you have um, you know Jordan, who's like very very acrobatic, mm-hmm. and he, he he can also play like his sort of a point forward role. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, yourself, who can dial it up or to two hundred percent. Cortez as well, he's brilliant. So. Um, Mark think, as well. Oh, Mark. Mark, Mark as well. Yeah, he's he's fantastic on the ball. He, he's got he's, he's very versatile player. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of very good players in that locker room. You uh, you, you, you know, I reckon you, as you say, probably beat everyone in the team. It just matters about who's on form, which day. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, everyone, make sure you go to worcesterwolves.org to get your tickets for the 29th of November versus the Newcastle Eagles. It's the BBL Cup quarter final. So make sure you don't miss out and get in here and support your Worcester Wolves. Uh, Kofi, anything to plug? Uh, follow me on Twitter at Keezus, which is K-E-E-Z-U-S, number four. Uh, Instagram at Dej Kof, which is D-E-J-K-O-A-F. Brilliant. So, Kofi, thank you for uh, being on this podcast. Hope you guys have uh, enjoyed watching and uh, catch us next time. And uh, come to the University Arena to support your Worcester Wolves.